Welcome to Stillworks and Brewing. My name is Randy and this is the channel that's all about home distillation and brewing. So what do we got going on? Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to distill out our frozen berry brandy. Uh, then uh, tomorrow what we'll do is we'll proof it down and we're going to mix it some more berries and, and a little bit of sugar and we're going to finish this up. Okay, so so the next thing we're going to do is let's take our hydrometer and we're going to put it in the fermenter just to make sure uh, it is done. I'm pretty positive that it is. And then what we'll end up doing is we'll siphon that into the uh, still pot and we're going to get ready to get uh, going. Okay, so let's take the lid off of that. Stick it over here for now. Okay, she is completely firm, uh, fermented. If you can see that, it is down to 999. Okay, yes, that is completely dry. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to siphon this over into our still pot. And we're going to use a screen so we make sure that we don't get none of this, the berries and stuff floating on. So let me, let me get that set up and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to start siphoning right now, and I'm going to use this screen so that we don't get any of them berries or hunks down into our still pot. The cleaner we are going into our still, the better off we are. Okay? Okay, so if we do the math, okay, we started with 1.083 starting gravity, and our final gravity. is one okay so if we take 0 0.083 times the factor of 131.25 it equals I mean almost 11 percent alcohol in that six gallons so 11 percent of the six gallons equals 1.66 gallons of 100 percent alcohol if we could get it So if we multiply it out, uh, basically what we're going to, we should get out of this run if everything goes well, is just a little over two and a half quarts of pure alcohol. Uh, so we might end up with, by the time we're done, we might end up with three and a piece. I it, I would say. Uh, so let's move on to the next step. Okay, if you notice in the screen, once I got done siphoning over, even though I was siphoning, there's a lot of particles, big hunks, that if I didn't use that screen, it would be down in the distillate, and then you'd have a chance of, you know, getting on the bottom or on the heating element or whatever the case may be and scorching. Okay, so just using a screen was a very simple um, thing to do to try to take that chance away. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we want to try to degas that liquid. And I just use a paddle, it's a wine stirring paddle. And all we want to do is try to degas that mash air. It don't usually take very much. Okay.
Okay, so what we what we're doing now is I have my P uh, PWM switch here hooked to my heating element. I'm putting about uh, about six amps. I I like to bring the heat up slowly or kind of slow, but I also do have a little bit of propane with a diffuser plate underneath the still. Just you know, I don't want no hot spots. What I'm trying to get at. Uh, I think we got a really good clean mash in there so I don't foresee any kind of scorching or anything like that uh, the smell of the mash is fantastic um, so it's gonna take a little while to heat this up uh, we did stack the still out I put two rolls of copper in the bottom of the first uh, section of the column okay uh, so while this heating is heating up a little bit, I'm going to get my coolant mines hooked up and all that good stuff. And, uh, okay, our still pot's starting to warm up. I'm feeling the column. I can feel heat starting to rise a little bit. I'm um, about 140 degrees inside my pot. The head temperature is only about 85. I see a little bit of condensation in the sight glass. Uh, so... It, here shortly it's going to start to rise all right so let's give it a little bit more time okay, while we have a second here while it's warming up uh, if you notice my cooling lines I got cold water into the bottom of the condenser coming out the top okay so this is basically set up as uh, pot still mode is what I call it okay so if if we wanted to send this in reflux I have a reflux chamber here that would go on top okay above the sight glass but below the out of the point of no return up top and what it would do is uh, you put cooling water into this and it would make the vapors that are coming up they would condense and come back down and make that reflux action and that will raise your your uh, ABV up of your distillate but then it also helps strip some of the flavors off. So that's not what we're into this time, but that is an option. Okay, so let's give it a little more time than, uh, I mean, I, I just got one drip off there. I mean, my pot's about 145, 46 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, so then vapors are starting to come up. I mean, you got a real strong, pungent taste or pungent smell. Okay, so that would be just starting our four shots. So once she decides she's gonna climb, you gotta be ready to uh, turn the heat back because when it goes, it's gonna go. Okay. Okay. So you know. I mean, my temperature, she flew up. The head temperature right now is about 175, 178. Um, and if you notice here, we got a good stream, kind of broken. Okay. Uh, I, it's kind of smells a little bit like fingernail polish with a berry, with a berry flavor or a berry smell. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to collect off, I'm going to go 10 ounces this time because this was, all fruit so i'm going to collect off about 10 ounces and we're going to consider that uh our four shots and heads okay i mean i can the smell is actually starting to go away that real pungent smell but i'm going to still collect off 10 ounces i mean we've only got about four there now okay so what I'll do is after I do this, we'll set the parrot up, and then uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so we got our parrot in. Our parrot just, just got full. We're coming out of the parrot. Uh, it looks like we are at about 145. Okay. I, I can live with that. The taste is fantastic. The berry really come through on that. 
I can really taste the berry is, is coming through. So this, oh, this is going to be fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to get this done. Mm. Alright, so uh, what I'm going to probably end up doing now is, like I said, I got my first 10 ounces I took off. I'm going to probably uh, do about a half a jar here just for to make sure everything's alright. And then I'm going to we'll start putting a quart jar in there and we'll start collecting for a while. Uh, I'm expecting to get um, somewhere in the neighborhood of, I'm, I'm hoping three quarts or so. Then uh, we'll, we'll uh, proof it down to about, um, I'm thinking a hundred. This ought to be very, very delicious. Okay, so if you noticed, I had to cover my column up. I mean, it's kind of a cold day today. Actually, it's really cold. And I was noticing I had to keep putting power into the heating element to keep up production. So I come to the conclusion that the vapors were coming up and then the column, the cold air would hit it and it was a reflux action down. So what I did is I just covered my column up. Uh, she seems like she's running back to uh, where I feel it should be. Um, actually, I have to turn the power down just a little bit now. Okay. Oh, the smell is fantastic. Wow. It's hard to believe how much of that berry is really coming through on that dislet. This is going to be good. Okay. So we got about a half a quart there almost. And it's coming off at uh, about 140. So, uh, we'll be here collecting for a while. Okay, so this runs just about in the history books. I'm coming up on 200 degrees on my head temperature. And I am at about 82 proof. So, I think that's where I'm going to call it. Okay. So, let me let that cool down quit running. Uh, the taste... I got three good, three and a half quarts here. Mm, the smell and the taste is out of this world. Uh, this is going to make some damn good brandy. Okay, so let me uh, let me get set up, and then we're going to try to finish this brandy up. Okay. Okay. I pretty much tasted all this. This is all very good. Oh, very good. Alright, so what I'm going to do mm. is I can't believe how much of this berry flavor comes through. Ah. So I'm going to proof this down. funnel all right let me see what our final proof is after I mixed everything together and then I'll About 120. So I think if I mix one bottle of water in that, we'll mix one bottle in there. Let me go get that and I'll be right back. And we are looking at 
about 105. I'm going to leave it right there. That's fine for me. 105. So, what I want to do is I wanted to keep one bottle of white, okay? I've had some people suggest I do that and said I would really like it. So, There's one bottle of white. Okay. okay, so we're going to put some berries in there. Ah! So I'm going to put a pound and a half in each one. Okay, so that's about a pound and a half berries in each one. Alright. So... I want to put uh, three quarters of a cup, uh, three quarters of a pound of sugar in. Okay. I think a little more. All right. So there's one. And we'll put three quarters of a pound in this one. Okay. Then put some of our dissolute in there. And you can make it sweet as you want or you know to your taste and we're gonna put the lid on that so we'll have to come back every uh, every day or so so we can uh, make sure all that sugar gets dissolved in there it, it won't take long Okay, that's going to be our berry brandy. Uh, so I got two bottles of that and I also got me some white. Okay, so really curious to see how this is going to turn out. So what I'll do, like I said, I'll come back every, uh, every day and then just give them one shake. And then we'll let them macerate and we'll give it a try and see how it turns out. This ought to be very interesting. It ought to be very good. Um, I guess the only thing I got left to do is clean up my mess. And, uh, hey, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time here on Stillworks and Bruin. It's starting to look good already. Yep, yep.